In this video, we will discuss about the behavior of inductor in DC. Let us consider a simple circuit with a practical inductor L, which is unmagnetized, is connected to a battery or DC source through a switch. Until the switch is open, there will be no flow of electrons through the inductor. That is, zero electrons flow through it. So, the magnitude of current is zero, and voltage across inductor is also zero. Switch closed, at time T1. When, the switch is closed, at time T1. The total source voltage, will appear across the inductor. There will be, a closed path in the circuit. Hence, it is clear that, current is having zero magnitude, at T1. The flow of electrons through inductor, starts, after time T1. Let us consider a few intervals of time span, T0, to verify what exactly happens. That is, T1 to T2, T2 to T3, and T3 to T4 has equal time span of T0. Between time T1 and T2. Let us assume that a 10 number of electrons have started to flow through the circuit after the switch is closed at T1 till T2. So, before time T1, there is zero electrons flowing through the circuit. And for the time span T1 to T2, there is a flow of 10 electrons. This clearly indicates that the rate of rise of current is high. That is, the rate of change in current is equals to 10. A high change in current will cause high change in flux. Because the rate of change in flux is proportional to rate of change in current. This change in flux linkage will induce an EMF across the inductor. Because the induced voltage is proportional to the rate of change in flux. The negative sign indicates that the EMF induced will oppose further change in current. This is also called back EMF. So, at time T2, there will be some induced voltage that opposes change in current. This induced voltage will be less than Vs between time t2 and t3 as there is induced voltage at time t2 the rate at which current rises decrease let us suppose there is no induced voltage at t2 it implies no opposition to change in current then the current rise in the time span t2 to t3 should be equal to the current rise in previous time span t1 to t2 that is 10 electrons so, that, the total number of electrons flowing, in the circuit should be 20, that is, 10 electrons rise in T2 to T3, in addition to 10 electrons in T1 to T2. But, now at T2, the inductor voltage is not zero. So, the rise in current, will be decreased. That is, between T2 and T3 the rise in electrons is 8, instead of 10 electrons. By adding, 10 electrons of T1 to T2, and 8 electrons rise of T2 to T3, the total electrons in T2 to T3 will be 18. As the change in current, decreased, the change in flux, also decreases. Due to this, the induced voltage, will be decreased. Between time T3 and T4. The same procedure, will continue, till current reaches steady state. That is, at time T4, the rate of change in current becomes zero. Hence, the induced voltage becomes zero. At this point, the change in flux becomes zero, which means, the flux is constant. So we can say that, the inductor stores energy in the form of magnetic field. We can observe, from the above cases, that inductor is opposing, the instantaneous change in current. That is why, current rises exponentially, and voltage decays exponentially before reaching steady state. After reaching steady state, the current will be constant, and voltage becomes zero. So, the inductor acts as a short circuit, for direct current, which in turn allows, maximum current to pass. That is, the inductor offers, zero resistance, after steady state. Let's see, what happens, if we remove the inductor, from the circuit, and connect it, to a resistor. The inductor, acts as a current source, because it has stored energy, in the form of magnetic field. The moment, resistor is connected, a huge number of electrons try to flow, through the circuit. That is, the change in current is high. Which means, the change in flux is also high. 
Due to this change in flux, a high back EMF will be developed across the inductor, which will oppose the change in current. So, the current decays, in an exponential manner, towards zero. And the induced voltage, also becomes zero. That is, the inductor is, completely discharged. 